Hello and welcome to this module on managing and monitoring your Azure resources. We're going to talk about some of the management tools that are available in Azure for you to provision resources, decommission them, and manage them. We're going to look at some of the different aspects of managing your Azure resources, some of the tools that will be familiar like a backup, and some things that will be new and unique to the cloud. And you'll learn about some of the monitoring capabilities that you have in Azure monitor your virtual machines or your services or containers as your applications are running in order to make sure everything's going according to plan. One of the important concepts to understand from the start is the notion of your subscriptions or accounts that you have in Azure. Now when you create an account, you can create underneath that these management groups that allow you a container for either other management groups or subscriptions. So you can see here, I've got a root management group and underneath that marketing has a subscription. And that then I can assign to the marketing department and give them the ability to manage the resources in that subscription. Under IT, I've got an operations subscription that they can manage and a development group where we have a QA or test and a production subscription. So this kind of hierarchy allows me to manage all of my resources in these buckets and decide who has access to see and manage those resources. So it's good to have an understanding of this as you start planning your organization's account and the various subscriptions that you're gonna manage within that. When you're ready to start managing specific resources and building your solutions, there's a number of tools you can use to do that. There is, of course, the Azure Portal, which is a web-based tool that allows you to go out and see and manage and monitor all your resources. It's a very robust web application with what are called blades that represent individual views on your resources. You also have command line tools, either the cross-platform command line interface or PowerShell tools that you can use to manage your resources. And if you want to use a command line, but you don't want to have to install those tools, you can use the Cloud Shell. This is a command line interface inside the browser that you can access through the portal so you can take advantage of all the command line tools and commands, but you don't have to install any particular tools and you could use it from any client then. And of course, there's the mobile app. So if you're not at your desk, you're out and about moving around the organization and you need to be able to check on things or take some quick actions, you can use the mobile app to do that. All of these tools at some level sit on top of a REST API for management of these resources. So they're all different interfaces, different ways to get your work done, but they all go through a common platform for management. When you think about managing your environment, there's a variety of different things that you need to do in terms of just provisioning and setting things up, but you also want to start thinking about backup and site recovery. So Azure has backup facilities. It has site recovery and recovery vaults that allow you to capture state and data and be able to restore from those backups all managed out in the cloud. And you have some facilities for storing some of those backups in the cloud or in your data center. There's automation and scheduling. So you can set up runbooks, define a set of operations that need to happen, and you can run those on command, or you can use a rich scheduling tool in order to schedule those runbooks to execute or schedule a variety of different tasks to execute. You have the ability to define policy and this is where those management groups and subscriptions really come into play because you can define those policies at those different levels. So you may say, here's the policy for IT. Here's a policy for this other department, whether it's marketing or sales or operations. With all these tools and all these capabilities around your resources, you're going to want to have some control over who can do what. So you have role-based access control, or RBAC, across all of the resources and the management features inside of Azure that allows you to go out and define through those policies or through individual steps or part of your deployment, who has the ability to take certain actions and work with these different resources that you're setting up. And of course, we have auditing and logging as part of that process for your governance and for your compliance issues. Part of managing your Azure resources is actually deploying them or provisioning those resources. And of course, you could use a variety of those tools that we talked about to go out and provision an individual resource, say a virtual machine. But Azure Resource Manager 
allows you to use a template file to find in JSON and describe a number of different resources, what resource group they're going to go into, what locations or what data center, and the various services that go along with that. This means you could do something like define a web application and a SQL database and set up a connection string between the two, or create a logic app and all of the connections that go along with it in that template, and then be able to deploy that template out to your environment. And those templates are parameterized, so the same template could be used for, say, a dev environment, a QA, and a production environment, where you just pass in different parameters to get the results you want for that environment. So this allows you to not just deploy a single resource, like an app service for your web app, but a whole number of resources that all make up your solution, and to put those out together through this template in a repeatable way. Azure Resource Manager is a really powerful way to do those deployments. But in preview at the time of this recording is the Azure Deployment Manager, which takes that resource manager up one level and gives you the notion of coordinating those resource deployments. So while you have a template for particular resources that you want to deploy, you can also define a service topology. So you may have several different regions where you're going to deploy the same template, but maybe with different parameters. You could have the services that include an ARM template for maybe the web layer, and a different ARM template for an API layer, and you define the rollout steps. So we want to do region one first, and then we want to wait and make sure that was successful, and then roll out into region two with that same template and those same services. So these tools are all about helping you create a repeatable, manageable process for deploying a set of Azure resources and getting them all provisioned in your environment. Once you have your application up and running, you're going to want to know when there's issues, and you're going to want to know when things are running appropriately. So for that, we have monitoring and alerts. The Azure Monitor is a very rich tool for giving you insights into what's happening in your application. You think about all the moving parts to a cloud application from web applications to maybe microservices, the data layer and other storage that's out there, all the virtual networking, logic apps, all these things that might make up your solution. You need an integrated monitor that's going to allow you to see the health of your application. We also have tools like Network Watcher. Now you've probably used network tracing tools in your environment before, but you had to go install that third third-party tool onto your virtual machine or your server and use that then to capture the traffic. And there's always some concern about the production impacts. Because all of our networks are virtual out in Azure, Network Watcher can just natively plug in and capture some of that traffic and monitor it for you. And because you probably aren't going to sit and stare at the portal or the mobile app in order to make sure everything's running 24-7, you have the ability to set up alerts. So you can get notified when something happens in the environment that crosses a threshold or that you decide is something that you need to get notified about so that you can take action and remedy that. We look at an example. Maybe you want to go out and deploy your application and monitor it. And what does that look like? Well, you've got that JSON template, your ARM template that you can use. And you can use the various tools we talked about, the portal, PowerShell, the command line, to go out and deploy that template along with any parameters and create a resource group. This is a logical grouping of various resources that you want to have in your solution. So it might create a storage account, a web application, an Azure function, and a logic app, all from that one JSON file and in a repeatable way that we can go do this over and over to provision, and create our environments. Once that's up and running, you can start collecting data into Azure Monitor, and we can get alerts if something happens. Maybe we have a failed run of our Logic app. We get notified. You want to know when there's issues that are happening in your environment. Another example, you may want to set up some automated updates. So you want to use that scheduler to go out and create a unique schedule for when this work should kick off. You're going to go run one of those automation run books that you've defined and go out to your virtual machines with Windows or Linux and make sure that they're up to date. Get them patched, get them updated so that your environment is current. So those are just a couple of examples of how you could use some of these management tools in Azure. So management isn't just about going out and provisioning resources. 
when you've got these complex solutions with a lot of resources in your Azure deployment, they require complex tools in order to manage them. We're talking about being able to deploy all of the resources. Of course, we also have to deploy code, and we'll talk about developer tools next, but you need to be able to deploy and provision all the different resources, virtual machines, web app hosts, containers. And you need to be able to monitor that and do the day-to-day -day operations to keep everything up to date, keep things patched if you're managing virtual machines and other items where you're responsible for that patching. And as Azure has grown, the management tools have grown along with it in order to give you the same, and in many cases, better types of experiences than you'd have on-premise managing an environment in a data center.